Three, two. Good evening. I now call to order the Equity Committee meeting with the Equity Advisory Council for Thursday, March 9th, 2023. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, committee and council members will state their name before speaking. Ms. Fass, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Dr. Savoy. Present. Ms. Harvey. And Ms. Lichter. Present. Present. Thank you. Ms. Fass, please call the names of those staff members on the Equity Committee attending today's meeting. Dr. Yarborough. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Dr. Yarborough. And uh, Mr. Handy. Present. Thank you. Handy. The first item of new business. Oh, so oh, sorry, sorry, Dr. Savoy. I'm sorry. There's one more students. category. Okay, please call and note the names of all staff members participating in the meeting. Request if there are any other members participating on the call that you have not named. Okay. Uh, Abir Shanawi. Present. Elena Mackel. It's Mikkel and I am present. Thank, Thank you. you. Alejandra Ivanovic. Brian Schiffer. Clifford Collins. Denim Fisher. Donna Sibley. Present. Alisa Alonzo. Aaron Sullivan. Present. Frank Dunlap. Javeen Hardin. Present. Juliana Valencia Banks. Present. Heather Denmeyer. Jackie Brewster. Present. John Bailey. Kevin Jennings. Lene Williams. LaShawn Stitt. Present. Lauren Tillman. Present. Leslie Weber. Lisa Norton. Maggie Cummins. Nikita Scott. Manny Henson, Marietta English, Marlena. I'm present. I'm oh. present. Sorry. I think that's okay. I was trying to unmute myself. <laughs> Thank you. Marlena Colton Purcell, Megan Stewart Sicking, Michelle Stansberry. Monica Sample, Sam Tillman, Shane Jensen, Present, Sherelle Jones, Susina Tillahun, Tiffany Stiff, Present, Zamira Simpkins. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to new business. The first item of new business is a presentation on Equity Advisory Council Planning Group Updates. And for that, I call on Ms. Stith. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. 
So I am calling in from the phone. I don't have, um, I can't see the, the screen per se. So I'm going based on the presentation um, that I have. So um, I'm not sure who's like forwarding the, the slides as we go, but I'm just going to keep moving and call out the next slide if that works. Does that work for everyone? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so um, good evening, everyone. My name is Tiffany Stith. And we are presenting an update today of our planning group. Um, we are going to start a little bit um, further back um, from where we first started because we are um, want to bring the current board up to date with where we are instead of just jumping in from where we presented from the last time. So um, the slide, the next slide that should be up is the current planning group members. Um, this is the current list of group members that we have. What you'll notice with our group members is that we represent a variety of perspectives. We do have BCPS administration, our principals. Um, we also have teachers, staff, and even students, which is great to hear their perspective as well. Um, we have members from TABCO, and then we also have the chairs of the education advisories that are involved with this planning group. Next slide is our purpose statement. Um, as we began talking about this, um, actually last year, back in the summer, we came together. One of the big things that we talked about was that we didn't want to just give lip service to equity. We wanted to really talk about what the issues were and then pinpoint what are some viable solutions and strategies that um, could be used towards equity. And so with that, we developed a purpose statement to try to make sure to guide the work that we were doing. And so our purpose statement is to increase the achievement, access, and opportunity by celebrating the diversity of our students through inclusive instruction, support, academic, in addition to social and emotional, as well as identification that creates, advocates for, and promotes a sense of belonging among the students. This allows our students, puts them on a path towards becoming independent, active, and engaged learners. The next slide is just a, a caveat about diversity. We look at diversity as an asset. It's not just a tool to identify and predict student success or even bar student, student achievement. The next slide contains our current top priorities. So after a lot of brainstorming and coming up with different um, thoughts about what were some of the pressing issues or challenges facing, facing BCPS at this time, um, we identified five priorities. These are not in order of importance. Um, but these were just the top five that we identified. A is an academic, looking at the academic achievement of marginalized students. B is the behavior and consequences. What are the disparities? We're looking at those disparities and consequences for black boys or males. And what is the impact of that exclusionary discipline on their academic achievement? The next priority is a holding space for discussions, being able to call in others, being able to partner, for example, even having interracial pairs and advocating for students, for staff, et cetera, when it comes to the issue of equity. The next issue, D, is recruitment and retention of teachers and academic assistants. Consider HBCUs, but in addition, consider uh, PWIs or schools that are not HBCUs uh, that may have support programs for teachers of color. And then um, priority E, is our intersectionality and intersecting identities. It's just a framework of identities, understanding that different identities may have different needs. So we could talk about different groups if you talk about BIPOC, and we could talk about black boys as one priority specifically speaks to. They may have different needs than um, children that are um, special education learners or have different needs than um, Latina students. So each of these groups, while they may have some needs that are similar, they, they may also have needs that are different. And then even within that group, how you deal with or handle one student um, may not be the same strategy that you use for another student. So it's not a one size fits all. So the next slides that we're gonna go through are specifically speaking to some of the um, thoughts and strategies that we've come up with as they pertain to the priorities. This is not again in any order. So the next slide is relating to priority E, and that is the equity liaison. So this is an established position that's within the school. All schools will have a equity liaison. And so in talking this through, 
this person it should be a staff member that's not a principal or an assistant principal. And they're going to work closely with the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency, so get training. Um, there's a conference, um, and I can speak a little bit more to this, but there's a conference, for example, that's held back in the fall, and Doug works with the Equity Liaison so that they're able to attend that training. These liaisons provide training and guidance and direction within the school. And so um, the liaisons reforce if they're having some trouble or need some additional support would be the equity specialist that's located within the office for that respective area. So we have the central area, um, east and west. Next slide, also talking about um, the equity liaison. So something that um, we have looked at and it's actually fantastic news because it started to move forward is that this is going to be a uh, an EDA um, and a paid stipend. So currently it's in the process of being a paid stipend for this year, the school year 2022-2023, and we will look forward to in, in subsequent years for it to be a, an EDA. Um, and so they would have um, different roles and responsibilities. So those particular roles and responsibilities that would be assigned to um, the equity liaison um, would be created by Doug's department, Mr. Handy's department, the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency. So um, as a group, we have been having conversations and kind of giving some thoughts and feedback on and feedback on what should those roles, responsibilities, duties entail. Um, but his office will establish what those roles and responsibilities are. So again, this liaison is going to work with the equity specialist as well as administration. And um, one of the things that they will be responsible for would be working in collaboration with um, the member selection for the equity action groups, which is on the next slide, and we'll talk about that. So equity action groups relate to priority C. And if you remember, priority C was this holding space for discussion. So being able to call in others or to partner, um, even having interracial um, groups and advocate. So EAG or equity action groups, we is a new concept that this group has come up with. And the idea is that the principal would be the lead, um, but we would also have a teacher and staff or teacher, a teacher or staff member from the school, as well as a school parent. So in addition to the principal, it would be those two people from the school community. And then there would be a second set of people that are from a partner school or from the community. So that would also be another parent, or it could be um, an administrator, or again, someone within the community that's very connected um, to the community and the school. This would be an interracial group. And um, this group is not trying to replace anyone. We would actually work in partnership with any existing groups or teams that support the students. Um, and the members, again, of this group, they would be chosen by collaboration. So they work with the administration of the school, the equity specialist and the equity liaison um, as far as the number selection for um, this group. Um, we've had a lot of discussion about this particular group. It's really is important. The idea is that it's a resource. Um, it's a resource for students. It's a resource for staff. Um, and so a big piece of this is going to be trust. Um, and so the person would, uh, who, for example, is experiencing equity issue or having some trouble would be able to um, speak to someone in this group and then that group, that group member or that group, they could direct the person to the appropriate resources to help them resolve. This is not like, for example, a replacement um, of anything, um, but just another resource in support for um, the school community. So that's the students, teachers, administration, et cetera. So that was priority C. So next slide is priority, relating to priority B. There is an existing program called Black Boy Joy and Genius, and this program exists at um, our, our current middle schools. So originally it was a state program, um, and it was three middle schools. Um, it was created by a grant, and there were a number of components that could be chosen, and they had to choose two. And so the two components that were chosen were training for staff and the mentor program for Black boys. And again, originally, um, it was only three middle schools, um, but Dr. Williams made a commitment. He has a commitment to equity, and this program has been extended 
to um, the middle schools in Baltimore County. That is the mentor program component. So at this time, for all of the middle schools in BCPS, we do currently have a mentor program for black boys, and that relates to priority B. Next slide is uh, priority D for the recruitment and attention of our teachers, academic assistants, and administrators. Um, this priority was actually refined a little bit originally. It did just speak to teachers and academic assistants. Um, but again, hearing some of the administrators in our group, we added them as well. It's important um, that they have support in, uh, in order to help keep them, right? We want to retain them, retain these great administrators that we have in BCPS. And so the idea would be that uh, looking at a mentor program for staff of color, um, and then as far as recruitment, in addition to those HBCUs, we would look at partnering with non-HBCU schools that have support programs. So um, what does that mean? So for example, um, at one point at University of Delaware, a public university right up the road in Delaware, um, there's a program called Inspire, which is a support program for minority students of color who are interested in teaching. So perhaps looking at a program like that is something exists at a non-HBCU to see about partnering with that school and trying to create that pipeline of, um, of teachers so that we can get more uh, minority teachers in BCPS. And last but not least with priority A, we have academic achievement of marginalized students. Um, there are data reports that exist um, detailing specific data points about uh, testing. Um, and so um, one of the things that we would like to see is that data segregated by area. Right now as a group in our entirety, we do, we do not have access to that information. Um, that is something that BCPS has. Um, I guess, and, and Doug can speak a, a little bit more, I guess, about that. I don't wanna misstate anything, um, but that data is there and even just the data the report from the past two years um, that show that we definitely have an achievement gap uh, when we're talking about marginalized students. So it's, um, and poverty actually is something that we continue to talk about in our group. Um, that's a factor that affects students and it affects all races. Um, and so just the idea that there's some data there um, that kind of gives us a good baseline um, so that we know where we are and then, of course, we have to look at what are the steps and strategies and things that we can do to start um, improving that data for our marginalized students. So where we are now as well with these um, current priorities um, is that, uh, as the chair, what I've decided to do is outside of our group meeting, um, now have some member interviews. So we're kind of doing one-on-one -on -one and really speaking to, again, we have so many different perspectives in our group. So really taking the time to speak to the different members of our group and get their perspective on each of these priorities. And so what you'll see um, on the right-hand side of this particular slide are some of the questions and, and thoughts that were given to um, kind of like prompt, right, for our members um, just to have a great conversation and get them thinking about equity, this specific issue or the priority as it relates to equity what things can we do? For example, like, are there any existing programs in BCPS? Can we extend an existing program? Or are there some new programs? Um, maybe within the outside of BCPS, within the state of Maryland, or even outside of the state of Maryland. And then, of course, as we really want to talk about the idea of having action, we want to start looking at what are benchmarks? How do we know that we're actually making progress? Um, how do we know that we're improving? Um, because again, going back to the data, the reports that have come out for the past two years have shown that we still have a lot of work that needs to be done. So the next item is, the next item, um, the next two slides are really just um, policy 8315. And so on that first slide, you'll see that um, group 2F is highlighted. And the, uh, this pertains to the stakeholder groups. And so the stakeholder groups were um, identified as of the 2018-2019 school year. 
on that next slide with the stakeholder groups, um, what you see is that being a stakeholder group allows the opportunity for the groups to report. Um, basically, they have an established time that they're able to speak with established slot that they're able to speak at in front of the Board of Education. And so this is a policy that is currently under review. And so now as the equity advisory would ask that they be identified as a um, stakeholder group so that they would also be able to use that slot to speak at a Board of Education meeting. Um, so that's one of the to do's or things that we're looking to try to get accomplished as well. And so with that, that is the latest update for where we are. I thank you for your time and attention. Um, and of course, always our group members. We have a lot of group members. I thank those who are able to be here and even for those who wanted to, which is we're not able to be here. Um, they've really given a lot of time and effort to um, this important work that we've been doing. So that concludes the presentation and um, any questions or thoughts at this time. Are there any questions? Ms. Stiss, I'd like to thank you on behalf of the Equity Committee. Oh, there is a comment. I'm sorry. Someone has a comment, please. Oh, please. I have a question. So just uh -huh. because we're new, um, can you just give us a little bit of history about the Advisory Council um, and the connection to the Equity Board Committee? So for that, I am going to defer to Doug. I think he can best explain that connection um, I'm you know we're newer this from my understanding this has been around this is a second year I was not part of this group the first year so that's why I'm going to defer to Doug to explain kind of kind of how things came about how this is implemented and how things move forward excuse me who is speaking who is asking the question I asked the question Brenda um oh, okay thank you Okay, Mr. Handy. Mr. Handy, I'm sorry. Yeah, up here. Yes, thank you, Dr. Savoy. Um, thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Sure. Um, so, and then I had the comment as well, but I'll let me answer Ms. Lecter's question. So, uh, Ms. Lecter, after the uh, Board Equity Advisory was formed um, under the leadership of Ms. Makita Scott at that time, she was the chair. Uh, there was an effort to gain the multiple perspectives that we often talk about in our equity work. So they knew that as a committee, um, the the Board Equity Committee would uh, bring back matters of equity to the full board. The Board Equity Committee also wanted to get uh, input from various members of the community, multiple perspectives, um, and to do that, they wanted to set up an advisory to give the Board Equity Committee, um, you know, additional input on what community members, internal staff, um, external stakeholders, uh, matters of equity that were coming up for folks. So. Um, if you listen to the list that, um, well, there's a planning team that helps to plan for the advisory, but we try to represent particular uh, groups um, in putting together the advisory, like principals, students, uh, teachers, of course, we try to look by zones. Uh, we also try to look at, uh, you know, historically marginalized populations, so our multilingual learners, um, our um, students receiving special education services, um, also our LGBTQ community we wanted represented. Um, and we've started recently getting interest from community members who have a passion um, for supporting equity work as well. So that's kind of where we are today as far as the, the advisory. Okay, thanks. That helps. Yep, you're welcome. Um, can I, Dr. Savoy, uh, follow up with my comment too? Just wanted to clarify. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and Mr. Corns, if I don't know, well, yes, if you can go back to, there's a slide on the uh, equity liaisons and it mentioned the stipend and the EDA. Just wanted to clarify a point on there. Uh, yes, sir, thank you. So uh, we, we do have, uh, we do have approval with from BCBS leadership to pay the stipend. So we've been in communication with our equity liaisons and our principals around the stipend. So we'll have that in place for this year. And that was actually a result of the work done by the equity advisory. So certainly want to give them um, credit and thank them for the work they did there. Um, there's also uh, an MOU, Memorandum, Memorandum of Understanding, between uh, BCBS leadership and TABCO to 
really uh, codify that um, stipend for this year. So that's work that's happening. And then as far as the EDA, that would be like any other new EDA. It's something that needs to be negotiated between um, BCPS leadership um, and TAPCO. So right now the EDA is to be determined for next year and beyond. And then like I said, the stipend is actually um, in the works for this year. Just wanted to point that out. Anybody else have questions? Okay, Ms. Stiff, Ms. Tiffany Stiff, I'd like to thank you for that excellent presentation. And I thank the Advisory Council for attending. And that is, if we don't have any other items on the agenda, the next Equity Committee meeting will be held on Thursday, March 23rd, 2023 at 4 p.m. The next Equity Committee meeting will be held with the Equity Council on Thursday, May 25th at 5.30 p.m. Is there any further business? Is there any further business? Thank you for joining us this evening. Everyone have a good evening.